Hello and welcome to 100 Yards of Football Sports Talk Radio. I am your producer, Jeremiah Long, and joining us is our host, Vincent Turner. How's it going, Vincent? Outstanding. Yes, sir. So today we have our history special. It is on the undefeated 1972 USC Trojans. And this is a team I did a little research on, and I'm really excited to hear more about. But something I noticed about them and something that I'm sure uh, Mr. Turner is about to really get into is how when the Trojans came out the box, they didn't really have any huge competition. But what was crazy is no one knew that this was going to be such a, a game, you know, a season changing season because they didn't come in as number one in the season or whatever. If I'm not mistaken, they came in ranked number eight on that season. Right. Yes, and, sir. You're totally correct. Because yeah. the previous season, they went 6-4-1. and one. There was a lot of turmoil within the team. They had a quarterback controversy. Mike Ray, who's a blue chip, highly recruited in the state of California. They had Jimmy Jones, who was the quarterback the previous two years. Let's be reality. They said the team was kind of divided. Mm. And so they had kind of like a mid, I want to say a midlife crisis in the midseason. They were 2-4 and four the previous year. And they had an offensive tackle by the name of Dave Brown that was a Christian on the team. And he said, hey, let's have a meeting of all the Christian athletes. He brought in the Fellowship of Christian Athletes mm -hmm. in the L.A. area. And from that point on, everybody said, hey, let's give our life to God. A lot of players committed to God that day. And then from then on, they played Notre Dame the following week, went into Notre Dame, who was ranked, I believe, number two in the country, beat Notre Dame and never lost a game for almost 23 straight games from here on in. And then they came into 1972, ranked number eighth. And how I knew this team was going to be special. Yeah. They played Arkansas, opening game. Oh, yeah, opening game. And you know what I like about Arkansas. I went there from 1978 to 1982, graduated. And I know how loud that crowd is in Little Rock, Arkansas, because they played at Little Rock War Memorial Stadium, the stadium seats about 54,000, the fans on top of you. And if you've never been in that stadium and you never understood the excitement, all you have to do is just go to one game. I think Arkansas plays one game there now. It's kind of like a I scratch your back type situation. But to hear them call them hogs is just unbelievable. And that USC team going into playing Arkansas, who's ranked number fourth at the time, had a big time quarterback from Shreveport, Louisiana, by the name of Joe Ferguson. They had some pretty good other football players, and Dickie Morton and Scott Bull. Man, Arkansas was, I think, a real, I want to believe, a slight favorite in that game. But when that Trojan team went in there and handled Arkansas 31 to 10 that evening, I know that team was going to be very special. And then look how the team went on. They played six ranked teams that year. Arkansas was number four at the time. As I mentioned, they had Joe Ferguson. They played Stanford. They had Scott, Scott Laylaw, who ended on going on becoming a pretty good running back with the Dallas Cowboys. They played Washington. They had a big-time defensive back in Kevin Jones. Then they played UCLA, their crosstown rival. They had the Hollywood man, who's not making a lot of money as an actor, Mark Harmon. We all know who he is. Then they had a big-time running back in James McAllister. Then they played Notre Dame, the Golden Dome, December 2nd, 1972. I'm going to go back to that date. They had Tom Clements. They had Dave Casper. And then they ended the season in the Rose Bowl against a very tired Ohio State team who came in ranked number two at that time. We all know who Ohio State had at that time. They had a freshman running back. I think his name was Archie Grimford out of Columbus, Ohio, a two-time half and winner. But a lot of other great players on that team, Randy Gratishaw, Neil Cozy, Tim Fox. Man, they was loaded. Big-time offensive tackle John Hicks. And you saw what the Trojans did to them in the second half. The game was tied 7-7, seven to seven, but they went on and blasted that team 42-17. to 17. So when you look at it overall, this is a team that's always was very talented, leading back into the previous season when they went 6-4-1 six, six, in 1971. But they had that meeting of the minds that year, got everything straight. And then they came into that season. A lot of sports writers on the national level really didn't think this team was capable of going all the way undefeated. And I have two cliches of that. Remember, I was in the eighth grade at Sherwood Junior High in Memphis, Tennessee. And 
When I think about that Trojans team, I think about the sports writers that was pounding them all year. And I come up with a song that's very evident in what we're doing here <laughs> on 100 Yards of Football. Yes, sir. It's an old song that the OJs had, Backstabbers. <laughs> well, we all know about backstabbers. Right now, 100 Yards of Football are flying, and that's how the USC Trojans did to all those sports writers. You smile in my face all the time. You won't take my place. I end up 12 and no number one in the country, baby. I beat six teams that year. And then I have another song that's real active to me. Remember, I was in the eighth grade, Jeremiah. Yes, sir. It's a song by a great songwriter. She was one of my females all the time. Betty Wright. Yep. <laughs> out of South Florida. She had a song, Clean Up Woman. The <laughs> two team cleaned up everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we were 100 yards of football. And one other point, to show you how great that team was, man, think about LSU had 14 players drafted off that team, and LSU had a great season this year. People yeah. saying they probably arguably the best single-season team. But that 72 team, mm -hmm. this is what sticks out in my mind, 13 All-Americans. 13 first-team All-Americans. 33 players drafted in the National Football League. Star power on offense, Charles to Tree Young, Super Bowl winner with the San Francisco 49ers. Lynn Swan, do we have to say any more about him? Four-time Super Bowl winner with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mike Ray, quarterback, won a ring with the Oakland Raiders. Richard Batman Wood, one of the best linebackers that ever played on the college level, played 10 years with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Steve Rowley, backup tackle with the Minnesota Vikings. Booker Brown. John Grant, Charles Phillips, Charles Anthony, Manfred Moore. I don't have to say no more. But the best player that stuck out of my mind on that 72 Trojans team, he didn't even really have a really outstanding NFL career. But he was one of the best college football players I've ever seen in my life. And he's always going to go down in history. Anthony Davis out of San Fernando, California. As a sophomore on that 1972 team, over 1,200 yards rushing, 17 touchdowns. December the 2nd, I told you I was going to come back to December the 2nd. 1972 against Notre Dame, six touchdowns. Only one other player I believe has done that. It's been Red Granger who did it in 1924, Illinois versus Michigan. And Anthony Davis, another cliche to that, didn't start to the eighth game of that year. But back to the Notre Dame game, he had six touchdowns. But he had two kickoff returns of 97 and 96 yards. And he averaged 77 yards kick return in that pivotal game. That was a fantastic team, man. And I'm going to go what Keith Jackson said, the late great Keith Jackson. He said, I've seen a lot of great football teams, the 95 Nebraska Cornhuskers, the 2001 Miami Hurricanes, even the LSU Tigers. I'm going to throw that in there. Keith Jackson has passed on of this year's team. But this 72 Trojans team, in my mind, I might get some people upset today here on 100 Yards Football. It's the best I've ever seen. And when you look at this team, probably Anthony Davis was their best player as a true sophomore, but their best overall athlete was that young man that changed football down here in the South on September the 12th, 1970. I think everybody knows who I'm talking about. And in his senior season, he was the fullback and still went first round with the New England Patriots in the 73 draft. And he was willing to sacrifice. And all I remember him was the second half against Ohio State going over the top. My man, Sam the Bam Cunningham. Look yeah. what he did. And he gave up and not being selfish. And that team was special. And coached by a great coach in John McKay, who won four national championships, being at USC from 1960 to 19, excuse me, 1960 to 1976. So in my mind, the USC Trojans are the best college football team I've seen in my life. It's no question about it. The Trojans are the team of the destiny. And one more you can say, we're probably going to get some arguments. Some other people are going to disagree. But when you look at the star power on that team again, Mike Ray, Charles Phillips, Anthony Davis, Lynn Swan, John Grant, Booker Brown, Manfred Moore, Charles Phillips, 
probably the man out of Elizabeth City, New Jersey, Richard Batman Wood. Mm-hmm. And the end the point here, they had two sophomores that end up having pretty good careers. Pat Hayton, we all know how his career ended up. Rhodes Scholar was the backup quarterback on their team, and J.K. McKay, who was an outstanding wide receiver. So all I have to say about the USC Trojans is this right here. Kudos. Dun, dun, well, man, um, I don't think that there's much more to say about that. Like the USC Trojans. 1972 season again like coming out the box as number eight they had a reckoning with their team before they started this season came out the box beat arkansas which i'm sure you were glued to the television on that particular game right off the season starter now, I'm, I'm gonna tell you a story about that they played at eight o'clock yeah. central time down in the south like i say i was um 12 years old mm-hmm. and at that time Arkansas Sports Network is on the station right now. It's a sports station in my hometown. Shout outs to the 901 WHBQ. So I listened to the game live. So that being said, I didn't really see any footage of the game till the following day. They had the Frank Brawls Culture Show. But what I did, what I did every Saturday morning, my father, who's watching Chester Tennant, could contest to this. I will always beat my father going out to get the newspaper in the morning. Because I wanted to be the first one to look at the sports section. Thank you, Dad, because he allowed me to do that. Much love to Chester Turner. But that's how I found out the game. I listened to the game on the radio. Oh, that's awesome. Well, let me ask you this question, because uh, one team that I noticed they did not play in 72 was Oklahoma. That's correct, right? So Oklahoma had a tremendous team that year, too. How do you think that um, the 72 Trojans would have fared against the 72 Oklahoma team? Well, when you look at that 72 Oklahoma team, they had Joe Washington, they had the Salmon brothers. That was a very fine football team, but unfortunately Oklahoma was on probation. You really can't say how that would turn out because that's going to be an argument that, hey, my man over here is better than you, but if we haven't played you, we can go on and bring up stats. We can bring on great, bring up great players. Both programs were great at the time. Yep. Really, when you look at it, it was only maybe four or five college programs that college football that was at the top of the hill. There was Alabama, there was Notre Dame, Oklahoma, and USC. Mm-hmm. But I think it, the answer to your question, I think it would have been a very competitive game. I don't want to hurt anybody or really hurt anybody feelings today from the University of Oklahoma because I got some relatives that live in Oklahoma. They die hard Oklahoma fans. Shout out to my cousins, Brent, Bryce, and Chris. The, their last name are the Turners, too. But I got to take USC. Because one thing about USC and about that situation there, in 72, the Lakers had just won a, the NBA championship, the Los Angeles Lakers. Yep. And you look at L.A. as a city. It's Hollywood. Yep. Oceans, yep. beaches, yep. 95 degrees in the winter. Just yep. something special about that place. And a college football team setting the tone out there. And then you got all them beautiful women. And when I was little, USC was my team because all I thought about was the Rose Bowl. And I know a lot of people don't want to really, maybe don't want me to say this today, but when I really started really getting excited about USC, was back in 1967. Mm-hmm. And I saw that young man break off a 64-yard run. I don't want to get long-winded. <laughs> but that's when I fell in with fell in love with you said last seven years old, that man from Galileo High School. Oh. By the way, a San Francisco Junior College. You know who I'm talking about. The Juice. OJ Simpson. Simpson, yeah. And when he broke that 64-yard yard run against UCLA. In the game, they had number one pit against number two, and UCLA had Gary Beeman. Yeah, that's when I fell in love with you. I mean, fell in love with USC. And yeah. Los Angeles is a great city to visit, man. Mm-hmm. If anybody hasn't been out there, everything is true about LA. The palm trees, the beaches, it's some nostalgical about the LA Memorial Coliseum. Mm-hmm. They had the Olympics there in '84, and I believe in '32. The city just had that that ump to it. Yeah. And man, USC, 
the Trojans, that college football team has been a big time stay in that city. And like I said, the 72 USC Trojans, I don't want to hear about the 95 Nebraska Cornhuskers. I don't want to hear about the 2001 Miami Hurricanes. Yeah. All I'm going to say is this. 13 All-Americans. Yes. 33 NFL draft picks. Not undrafted free agents, right. but draft picks that actually got drafted in the National Football League. Yes. That's only one other college football team that I've been following this and following the history that can compare to that. Yeah, and they're not even really a power five school, and that's a team from the six one five. You should know because you're from Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and the six one five. We're talking about Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. It's the Tennessee State Tigers. That oh, okay. 1966 team put 27 players in the National Football League. Wow, Claude Humphrey, Edrich Dickey, Nolan Smith, Jimmy Marcellus, the '72 Trojans, and the '66 Tennessee State Tigers. I mean, Tennessee State Tigers are the only two teams that I see comparable when you're talking about going undefeated, NFL talent, and yeah. taking it to the next level. In my mind, them the two greatest college football teams ever. That's incredible. Well, for everybody watching, this is our history special on the 1972 USC Trojans. I am your producer, Jeremiah Long, and you've been here with our host, Vincent, Mr. Football, the in football's encyclopedia Turner, and uh, what's your final word for USC Trojans, 1972, undefeated school? Like I say, when you look at John McKay put together one of the most greatest teams ever, uh, what, a, what I think about that team, I think about the greatness they showed. They was tied up at halftime with a very good Ohio State team in the 1970s Rose Bowl. The game was tied 7-7. Seven to seven. They yep. came back out in the second half and scored 35 points and pounded and ran the football with that very outstanding offensive line. And what I remember most about the 72 USC Trojans, my man Sam the Bam Cunningham going over <laughs> top for four touchdowns in that game. And John McKay looking at Archie Griffin. I mean, excuse me, looking at the great late Woody Hayes across the sideline saying, I'm coming to you again, baby. You oh. cannot stop me. You <laughs> cannot stop me. I'm we had, um, we had, uh, Kevin Phillips, who I uh, wanted to make sure that we also uh, highlighted Archie Griffin as well as uh, Sam Cunningham. Yeah, some great people. Oh, Anthony. Oh, Davis. Yeah. Now, now, see, the great thing about this, we got a lot of people following us. We got a lot of fans. Kevin is a cousin, too, out of the 901 Memphis, Tennessee. So he's trying to start something here. Uh, as far as Archie Griffin, Archie Griffin was a great running back. But yeah. when I look at Archie Griffin, what did he do in the pros? Great college running back like Anthony Davis. But, Kevin, you're my cousin. I love you. But if you want to say and judge their careers, college-wise, I give it to Archie Griffin only because he won two time, he won two halves and trophies, and he was in the offense at Ohio State that ran the football. But looking overall, great athlete. Not being being a team player, not being selfish, yeah. and also being a great man and yeah. representing the school and changing the culture yeah. down south in 1970. Let me give that date again, September 12th, 1970. I'm going with my man Sam the Bam Cunningham every day out of Santa Barbara, California. Yes, sir. And I might make some Ohio State fans mad today. But, hey, this is how I feel. I'm not going to agree with everybody. But, Kevin, I love you, man. Represent the 901 today, baby. Absolutely. So if you guys have any comments on what you think about the 1972 USC Trojans, put them in the comments and make sure you subscribe. And for our YouTube watchers, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you get notifications because we go live every week multiple times. We've been producing, what, about between five and ten shows a week? Um, yes, sir. Right? But, yeah. but what – yeah, but what I like, but what I what I like to say before I get off here today, first and foremost, thank you, Jeremiah Long, Absolutely. the greatest producer in the world. Listen for him. I don't care what other sports thing you're looking at, from TV to radio to Facebook, Instagram. This guy's the best in the business. Much love to you, brother. To our team at 100 Yards of Football, which has been a great ride over the month. Let me give kudos to Babyface Nelson. Uh, a guy who's our co-host, Logan Landers. Much love to you, baby. Is doing an outstanding job on our history videos. To my team, my man, North Atlanta's finest, defensive coordinator, doing an outstanding job with his segment, Kevin, the Bull Jones. 
our basketball guys, my man, Mr. Brian Spencer, head basketball coach at Carver Bible College, Syracuse University, and the newest talent with 100 yards of football, Mr. Will Weatherspoon, Will Weatherspoon, head basketball coach at Walnut Grove High School over there in Logansville, Georgia. Thank y'all, man. Y'all been outstanding. And, of course, family, we've been very blessed with a man who played 12 years in the National Football League, two-time All-American at Florida State University. We call him the legend, the NFL guy. We got so many nicknames for him. <laughs> it's unreal. Mr. Yeah. Bobby Butler. And then the guy who a lot of people haven't really seen behind the scenes, and I wouldn't be here doing this today, is my man out of Brooklyn, New York. Much love to Ronnie Keebler. And to our fans today who's already hit our page today, I don't want to leave them out. To my sister, my baby sister, down in the 901, supporting me 100. Stephanie, I'm going to call her middle name, Ann Turner, and give her love because she's a cancer survivor. <laughs> to my cousin out there in Sacramento, California, this is Sandra Booker. Thank you for all your support. And to my man, Roll Tide, Alabama, Mr. Troy Beachman. Thank y'all for supporting us so early this morning here on 100 Yards of Football and catch us on Wednesday. And that's all I have to say. I'm very blessed today. God bless and have a wonderful day. And the USC Trojans are always in my heart going to be the best college football team that I've seen or experienced in my lifetime. And the second team to bring that up, I will give up some love, Jeremiah, is the 1966 Tennessee State Tigers. Absolutely. Well, for 100 Yards of Football, I am the producer, Jeremiah Long. Joining me is our host, Mr. Vincent Turner, and we'll see you guys a little later in the week. See you guys.